Hey everybody, welcome back to homerecordingmadeeasy.com and here on my YouTube channel, and this is our last video of the Icon QCon Pro X series set of videos. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, what do you mean this is our final last video of the series? Make sure you check the link in the description box below. There are a whole host of videos on how to unbox it, set it up, get rolling, how to get through all the basic functions and how to get yourself up and running with the Icon QCon Pro X control surface. So go check that link in the description box below. In this video, I'm kind of going to give you um, some things that I really, really like about this product and things that I think can be improved. And just talk to you a little bit about this. So if you're someone that's looking at a control surface and you're looking at this specific unit, or if you just bought it and you just got it out of the box and you're trying to learn how to use it, and um, this might be helpful as well. But I think this video is really more for people that are in the market for a control surface, um, is this one that they should consider? What are my initial thoughts? What do I see right out of the gate that is awesome about it? And what things do I think can be improved with the whole process? And just talk to you a little bit about surface controls in general. If you check the archive of videos on my uh, webs on my uh, YouTube channel here, you'll know that I've done some other surface control uh, product demonstrations and reviews and those kinds of things. You can go check that out. We took a look at the PreSonus fader port. We took a look at the SoftTube Console 1. We took a look at the SSL series of products. And now we're looking at the Icon QCon Pro X. So that's what we're going to do in this video. Um, before we get started, make sure you go out to homerecordingmadeeasy.com because I want to give you a free mixing course. It's right on the homepage. There's a $100 mixing course free of charge, no strings attached. It's my gift to you just for visiting homerecordingmadeeasy.com. And also too, we're talking about surface controls and mixing and such. If you really want to learn the craft of mixing in a very non-technical way, and you want to join a community of like-minded people that are all trying to get better at the craft of mixing, perfect for someone who's new to mixing, or even someone that's been mixing for a few years, check out mixingmadeeasy.net. That's my mixing training membership website. All the links will be in the description box below. So let's talk about the Icon QCon Pro X. Now, they make different surface controls. If you're not aware, if you go out to the Icon uh, website, and again, I'll leave all that stuff in the description box, the link, you'll see that they make a couple different, they make a lot of products, but they make a few different versions of their surface controls. The Icon, the QCon Pro X is their flagship model all of their models, and I don't remember all the model numbers, all are gonna have the basic same functionality and features, and, so, and as you get up to the, to the Pro X, you're gonna get some additional features. The number one thing that you see right away, if you look at the QCon Pro X, the number one thing that everybody that I really like and what is one of the biggest features, I think, is the meter bridge that you, you get on this that you don't get on some of the lower models. So you're gonna wanna go check out on their website the information of how these things vary from product to product and price point to price point. My assumption is that they're all gonna have the same kind of build quality. They're all gonna have the same basic features and functions and any one of those products will do for you depending on your specific use case and needs. So let me tell you about the top, I got seven things written down here of things that I really like about this and the, and the limited time that I've used it only for a couple of weeks as I was putting these videos together. Um, let me give you some of the things that I really, really like about it. So the number one thing about this unit um, that is just really fantastic and probably one of the better ones I've ever put my hands on is the overall build quality. The overall build quality of this thing is, is top notch. It's professional. It's not cheap, chintzy, or any of those kinds of things. Not that other products aren't built well, but this thing is really built well. I mean, you pick it up, it feels like it's heavy, it's built well, it'll last a lifetime. Um, it looks and feels top quality from a build perspective, okay? That's the number one thing. Um, the second thing about this, um, again, depending on your particular needs and wants and your use case in your studio, this could really be and is probably the only control surface I've ever seen or used that can be the centerpiece of your studio. So if you're looking for that kind of console, kind of like a real desk, real analog thing, like the thing that's sitting over my shoulder, over my right shoulder here, like a real console, um, this looks that part, it feels that part, you can absolutely put this on your workstation or one of those nice studio desks or customize a studio desk. And this could be the centerpiece of your studio 
where, you know, you, you, you look at it and people come in or clients come in, it looks impressive. It has that vibe. Okay. Most control surfaces on the market are more small, compact, which has their place. Um, but looks like add-ons to your system. This icon QCon Pro X feels like the centerpiece. Okay. It really, truly does. I love that about it. From someone who works on an analog desk, this is the closest thing I've ever put my hands on that has that same kind of feeling. The only other one on the market that I know of as of the recording this video that's kind of in that ballpark are some of the more expensive Avid S series. But you're talking about, you know, five, six, seven times the cost of something like this. I've never used one of those units, but there are things in that product line that are kind of console like feel very expensive. I'm sure they're great. Very expensive. Uh, this has that same kind of vibe. So that's the other thing it, it is, it is a centerpiece. It can be. Okay. The third thing I really like about it is that it's expandable. So you can start with just the icon QCon pro X, the center section here, where you just have the eight faders with the master section right? Eight banks of eight, well, not eight plus a master, nine faders. And then you can add on as your studio grows. This is, this is the 24 channel version, which has two extensions on it. You can buy the extensions in buckets of eight. So you can expand this as your studio grows. So you can make this small and compact, okay? Eight channels, or you can build it out as much as you need. I like that about it. Most other surface controls, you really can't do that. Although some of them say, yes, you can daisy chain a couple together, but they don't, but they don't look like, they don't look like they're made to be put together, right? Like if you have a surface control that has a master section like this, you could buy another surface control that has a master section and daisy chain those two together. So now you have two master sections and one, you know, which one works. One's the master, one's the slave. This whole system is built around a master section and expansion buckets. Much like an analog console where you buy a center section and then you could buy buckets of eight with certain manufacturers. So it's got that same kind of philosophy and same kind of thing. And that's really cool. No other surface control that I'm aware of um, does that. Okay. So that's really cool as well. Um, I like the fact that you have this, um, this master section with all this uh, DAW functionality here with all these buttons. And they have the steel or the metal insert here, right? the auto program metal insert for all the DAWs on the market, which we'll talk about. That's really cool. I've not seen that in any other control unit. Plus, which we didn't talk about in this series, but you also, if you don't like what's already kind of pre-programmed here per the DAW that you have, you can put a blank insert in here, you can download their IMAP software and you can completely customize it the way you want. If you understand all the MIDI mapping and all that stuff and for your particular DAW, you can totally customize this is what I'm getting at. You can use the functions and the layout of the stuff that comes with the specific DAW with the specific insert that you have, or you can start from scratch with the IMAP software. Again, that is unique to this product that I haven't seen in any other product. Other, other control surfaces do have some buttons and some switches that you can program much like this one you have eight of them here but they don't have the flexibility that this particular unit has that's another really big plus about this the other thing that i like about this which i think is great when you purchase your icon qcon pro x the center section you not only get the cubase uendo insert which comes standard but they also give you all those uh, plastic overlays that you can, for every DAW that's out there, that comes with this, not the metal inserts, but the plastic overlays that you can go into manual mode and you can choose your DAW on startup. So if you're using different types of DAWs, this is customizable for every DAW on the market, which is really, really great. Also, if you wanted to have the metal insert for, for if you didn't want to use the plastic overlays, and let's say this is, I have the studio one insert here, it comes with Cubase or Uendo. And let's say you're also a logic user and you just wanted to have the three metal ones and you wanted to switch them in and out by taking out the screws and inserting the new one in. We did that in one of our videos in the series, go check the playlist. They'll give you that for free. All you have to do is pay for the shipping and handling, which works out to be about 30 or 40 US dollars roughly. So that's a good feature as well. That's really cool. Again, depending on what you wanna do, you can get all the metal inserts where you have all the pre-programmed map stuff for you. 
really, really cool. That's really, uh, really nice to have. Um, the other thing I liked about this, and you saw this in one of our earlier videos in the series, the setup is dead simple, dead simple. Whether you're in manual mode or whether you're in auto mode, it's very, very simple to set up and get up and running no matter what DAW you have. Um, you have the hookup between the USB cables directly to the, um, to, to the one hub power hub. It works perfectly. There's never, I haven't yet had any dropouts or miscommunication where it lost connection or anything like that. It's been very, very stable. Again, only been using it a couple of weeks, but if it's been stable for this long, my guess is it's gonna be stable the entire time. That's really good as well. Um, overall, again, as I said, another point that I really like, like I kind of just mentioned, it's got a lot of functionality in this master section. A lot of functionality, a lot of ways you can program you know, plug in parameters to all the encoders. So depending on how many extensions you have, you have more encoders that you can program all kinds of plug in parameters to. Most control surfaces will have that functionality, but it'll be limited in scope because of the amount of buttons and switches on those particular units. This is more expandable. That's really cool as well. Um, and then as I said a little bit earlier, um, the last thing I really like just to kind of put, a, 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 you know, an exclamation point on this point, because I think this is huge, is this thing can be expandable up to 32 faders minimum on a few DAWs and on most DAWs up to 64 faders and buckets of eight. I've yet to see any control surface that does that. Okay, now, again, every one of these expansions, you know, costs some money, but even brand new on the market, and again, I don't want to quote prices because depending on when you're watching this video and what's going on in the world today with inflation and interest and all that other stuff, these things can come up and down in price. But let's just say they are very reasonably priced. They are. They're fairly priced. That for a fair amount of money, you can expand this thing. So again, I have 24 faders here. My SSL over my shoulder here is a 32 fader console. If I wanted a 32 fader DAW controller, I just get one more bucket of eight. If I want a six, if I want a 40 DAW controller, I just get another bucket of eight. Again, you have to have the real estate on your desk. You have to have the right studio desk, the right real estate, right? But you can do it. So you can have as many faders up to 64 as you want, which is probably overkill. I think the sweet spot for me personally is 32. And that would give me the same amount of faders that I have on my SSL origin. Um, but this is not as deep as an SSL origin, which is kind of nice. So it takes up a little less space in a real console from front to back, but takes up about the same space from left to right. So that's a really good, again, I don't know of any DAW, or excuse me, I don't know of any surface control that does that. Again, there are other products where they say, yes, you could daisy chain two or three of these together. But when, even when you daisy chain together and you squish them together, they look like three separate units. They don't have this same look and feel. And I know you may think that that's, uh, you know, it was, it's only looking, you know, it was so what if it, what it looks like. When you walk into, when you walk into your studio and you see this thing looking like, looking like a real desk, looking like a real analog thing, and it looks cool like this got a cool factor that's off the charts it inspires you to want to work on it and mix on it i know it does for me um and you may not be one of those kind of people <laughs> that may not matter to you because there are other surface controls on the market where you could take a 16 channel and put two of them together now you have 32 faders it doesn't look anything like this it doesn't look anything like this it just doesn't so anyhow those are the things that i really like about it okay it is a great product overall so if you're in the market for, well, let's talk about now the things that I think, I wouldn't say dislikes, I would say things that I would do to this control surface to improve it even further, to maybe even make it a better user experience. Not that it's not a great user experience now, it is, but to make it even better. And the things that I'm gonna suggest here, I know would add cost to the product, I get it. There's, you know, these, these companies have to make these things to certain price points to be able to make a profit. And some of these things are kind of nice haves that you really don't need to have. And everybody's wants and needs are going to be different. I get it. But if, if we didn't have to worry about that, if we could throw cost to the wind, right? Throw it to the wind. Who cares? What would you do to this thing? If it didn't matter, what else would it cost? What would you do? There's a few things I would do. Um, the first thing that I would do 
is they, I love the fact we have two LCD screens here. I know you can't see the, the detail over the overhead shot, but if you go watch all the other videos, you'll see I've zoomed in on this and you can see it. But the second LCD screen down here, at least for the two DAWs that I tested this with, Studio One and Cubase Pro 12 and Studio One Professional version five, these LCD screens don't do anything. Now, again, according to Icon, that is not a function of the QCon. That's a function of the DAW and, and, what, and, what, the, uh, and what the DAW um, has, what, how it works with the DAW. And we'll talk a little bit more of that in a couple minutes. Um, so for me, because I'm a Studio One user and my second DAW would probably be Cubase, um, these things are useless. Um, but if they did work with my DAW, they're a little difficult to read because they're sitting flat. I would love to see these little screens flip up on a little boop, little, little angle, kind of like the one on top here is because the meter bridge is angled. That would be kind of cool. Even looking at this now, I can read the text, but it's a little difficult to read. And if it did work with the DAW and I could put things like plug-in parameters or something there, I'd want to flip that stuff. That would be the first thing. Flip that up, boop. That would be the first thing I'd want to do. Um, the other thing that um, I wish could be a little different and, um, the master section here, all of these inserts and overlays have text on them telling you what uh, each button is doing depending on the DAW that you have this in. But it's very difficult to read the text, especially in a more dimly lit studio, which is how most studios are, got a kind of a vibe going on. The text is a little bit hard to read. Some of it you can read, some of it is almost impossible to read because it's too dark on the black background. Um, and sometimes you gotta kind of lean over to kind of read what you're doing until you memorize it. Um, now I've seen some videos on YouTube from some users where they've actually put little stickers on the buttons to write a little, little labels because they couldn't read the text, <laughs> which is fine. But you know what I would have loved to seen? I would love to see this from an ergonomic point of view. I'd like to see this master section kind of tilt up on like a, whatever that angle is, 40 degree angle, 30 degree angle, where this thing kind of sits up and is a little bit more angle towards you so it would be easier to read. It would be a little bit better user experience from a functionality point of view. Now, if you were to do that, you would block this beautiful um, time code meter here on the, which was really nice on here, but there's a lot of dead space up here. I would have put this up here and I would have had this master section maybe be connected to this meter bridge and come down on an angle. And then when you do that, you'd have an easier time reading the text unless you were to illuminate these, but I know because you're swapping in and out different inserts, that's not practical. But I would definitely had this thing angled up and maybe even make the print a little bit larger. You probably could have got away with a little bit bigger font just to make it a little easier to read. That would be something I, I would do. Um, the other thing I think would be helpful my first thought was, I love again the fact that we have the encoders and they're multifunction encoders. And when you want to do things like plug-in control, you can map all your plugins to plug-in controls to these encoders. It works great. We did a video on that. And depending on again how many extensions extensions you have will depend on how many encoders, which means how many parameters can you put on the encoders. But just in looking at just the master section here, and it goes the same for the two extensions. Well, let's say you just had the eight channels in front. There is a lot of dead space here. It would have been great. Two things I think I would have done. I would have either move the encoders down here to the top of the fader so you don't have to reach as much. I would like them right here. And if that little screen was flipped up or however we were talking about earlier, that would be great to have the encoders a little closer to you, less reaching. Or it would be great to leave these up here, maybe have a second row of encoders here. Or if all these buttons and the LCD screen could have moved down a little bit, you could have put two rows of encoders here easily. Now, why would that be helpful for plug-in control? Let's say, you know, what are the most common plugins you use on the majority of your tracks, right? In mixing, it's usually EQ and compression, right? It would have been nice to be able to say, well, you know, thinking, you know, for, for workflow, um, maybe my top row of encoders are always my EQ and I, and I assign my bottom ones always for compression or something like that. Then that way, when I have my plugin up, I always have my encoders in the same spot. I start to memorize where everything is, even though it's written on the LCD screen. Um, I think that would be helpful. Give it a little bit more functionality. Now, like I said, a core, you add another eight encoders to this. You just added more costs to the product. I get it. 
But again, there's a lot of dead space in here. I think with all the dead space that's in here, we could have done something a little bit better to give you a little more functionality. You could even, you have these mute solo arm and select buttons here. Um, these could have even pushed together a little bit more. I think there would have been a better way to put, without making things too crowded, you could have shrunk this down a little bit and you could have given us some more functionality. That would be really cool as well. Um, the last thing, which again, this is a silly one. I know for most people it doesn't matter, but for, for me, one of the biggest things I hate about using with a surface control, actually there's two things, right? I've said this throughout the series, but my two biggest complaints with any surface control is that how intuitive is it with the DAW? Meaning when I touch something on the hardware, I wanna see that thing happen on the screen in front of me. I wanna see a mirror image that is really more related to the DAW specifically than it is the, the functionality of the QCon, which we've talked about in other videos in this series. Um, but the second thing that I hate is I hate the whole concept of banking or pages. And what do you mean? Well, that means let's say you only have eight faders here in this on this controller, which is great. You can either you can either move over in banks of eight or you can move over one channel at a time. I always hated that because I always seem to get confused on where the heck I am on the screen versus where are my faders. And I know the track names pop up in the LCD screen, but it always seemed to confuse me, which is one of the great things about the QCon is that you can put as many faders on this thing as I set up the 64 as you want. So if you wanted a 32 or 42 channel fader, that means you have less banking that needs to be done. So that kind of solves that problem. However, I would like to see, and it's probably a silly uh, idea and it probably doesn't make any sense, but I'll say it just because, hey, I, I just share my thoughts with you guys. That's why you follow me because I give you my honest thoughts on these things. If I was gonna bank over, I would like to see it bank over as many faders as you have in front of you. Now, so what does that mean? So that means that if you only had the eight faders in front of you and you hit the bank button to go over eight faders, it would move a group of eight. So let's say you had, let's say your, your session had 16 channels in it, but you only had eight faders in front of you. So channels one through eight, you hit want the bank over eight. Now you'll have channels nine through 16. If you only had uh, 12 channels in your session, you'd bank over eight and then nine, 10, 11, 12, only the first four faders would, would, would pop up on the second page. That would be, that, that makes sense. When you get to 24 faders, and let's say you have 36 tracks in your session, you hit eight and everything kind of shifts over. And it just, I don't know. I know it's, it just doesn't seem intuitive to me. And then I, I get kind of confused. Well, where am I? And I got to start doing math in my head and all of that. And I don't like that. So I wish there was another way. And there probably isn't <laughs> as I'm talking through this, but I wish there was a better way to not have to deal with the whole thing of banking. Um, again, the way you deal with it here is just buy more extenders. And that's what I would do. If this, if this was my main rig that I was mixing on every single day, I would have a minimum of 32 because 32 would fit on my desk. 32 faders would take up about 70 inches on the desk, about a six foot desk, 72 inches, 32 would fit. And if I was really mixing on this thing full time every single day, I would have a custom desk and I would probably have 40. I would have a 40 fader thing uh, here because it's I'd have your all your audio tracks and then you can hit a button and then all the audio tracks will go down and you can see all your buses on a second layer, all your effects on a third layer. But I would have probably 40 audio tracks. Then no matter what kind of session I'm using for the most part, unless you have a session with a hundred audio tracks, and I'll be honest, even if I had a hundred audio tracks, I would think of this thing more like an analog console. I would say if I only have 40 faders or I only have 32 faders and I'm going to comp stuff in my DAW. So it only comes out to 40 faders or 32 faders or 24 faders or whatever you have, then this way banking doesn't become an issue. Now I know some of you are looking at me like you're an idiot, dude. That's why this is so great is you can have as many <laughs> channels as you want and you just bank over and you're not limited like you are on your SSL. I understand. But coming from an, an analog desk to the digital world, I don't want to bank. <laughs> I don't want to bank.
So I would do that personally, but that's just me. So any of you that want to have ever worked on an analog desk and the whole banking thing kind of confuses you the way it confuses simple old uncle Dave, that's one way to do it. Get yourself 32 faders, right? Minimum 32 would be the minimum for me. When you get your session, comp it down, combine things, bust things. So you only have 32 tracks coming out to this thing. Then banking doesn't become an issue. So is that a fault of the QCon? Of course not. That's just my thing, my wish list of improvements. How do I get out, or can we make this banking more intuitive? I don't know. I guess if I sat down with the good old people over at Icon and we were knocking around some design ideas, we could probably come up with a better way to do that, but that would be my thing. And outside of that, the last thing I'll say is that, and again, it's not a fault of the QCon or any other control surface that's out there, by the way, it's a, it's a fault or it really, the quirkiness that it has with some DAWs. You saw in this series that with Studio One, which is my primary DAW, when I touch the touch sensitive faders, it doesn't select the track in the console view in Studio One. So again, when I touch track nine and I go to move fader nine, fader nine will move in my DAW, but on the screen, in my in studio one the track doesn't highlight the select button doesn't come on so again i'm not getting i'm not getting that same mirror feedback i want that personally but in cubase pro 12 that works beautifully and again you can go watch i think it's the second or third video in this playlist it does that beautifully beautifully if i'm on track number one in studio one my track one will light up in my console view but because I only have, let's say 15 tracks that are visible to me on my computer monitor, cause I only have a 27 inch monitor. If I go tap number 24 down here, it will work. But in studio one, the console doesn't advance on the screen. It does in Cubase. It may in logic. It may not. It may in pro tools. It may not certain DAWs have some of these little things where the icon works a little bit better from a functionality standpoint in others. It's not a fault of Q icon and QCon Pro X. It's a fault of the limitations of the way some of the, the DAWs are designed. And I know they work with all these companies to try to get a lot of these functions done, but some of that is out of their control. So what I would say to you is, depending on the DAW that you're using, this could have a little less or functionality than with some other DAWs. So far, is any of them a showstopper? I would say no. Um, even with some of those little things in Studio One I just mentioned, I still would use this with Studio One. There's a couple little quirks. You could probably get over it. There may even be some other workarounds once you really get into this thing and figure out. You can customize this the way you want and you can work through most of those problems. But that's just something to be aware of. Okay, so that's really it. Um, overall, as I said, great controller, pro looking, pro behaving, centerpiece, high quality, works really well. It is by far the coolest controller I've ever had in my, in my hands. I haven't used every one on the market, but out of the ones that I've used, this is the one that is more for me personally coming from a real analog console. And I think that's what this product is marketed towards. People that want that, that get as close to an analog feel and vibe and experience as an analog desk. This is the closest one I've ever seen. Maybe there's some other ones out there. Like I said, the Avid stuff I think is in that ballpark, but they're so ridiculously expensive. I personally wouldn't even entertain it, but I'm sure people that have those S series stuff probably love them. I'm sure they're great products but they're not in the same price bracket. They're not even close. Um, so anyway, I hope that you found this helpful. Um, I know I'm rambling a little bit here, but again, if you're following me, if you come here, this is the way I do these videos, right? I get on here. I have this stuff for a limited period of time. I'm trying to give you the first kind of impressions experience with limited experience, how easy can or can I not get on with a product and try to give you my honest assessment if you're in the market for something like a surface control what do I like and dislike about it or the experience? And I've done that with everyone that we've done. 
every surface control that I've done on this channel has great features in it. They're all good products, but it really depends on your particular use case and what you're going for, right? That really depends on whether this is something for you. Even in its, we'll talk one more thing, even in its minimum form right here, this, the, I, just the master section, physically, this is a big control surface compared to soft tube console one, compared to fader port 16, compared to UF8, this is physically a lot bigger. Now, as I said earlier, Icon makes smaller, more compact control surfaces with a lot of the same functionality. So there's probably an offering in their product line for you. And if they're built and have the same kind of functionality and quality as this thing, I would absolutely take a look at that. Um, but this particular unit compared to the ones I just mentioned, it's big, it takes up a lot of room. But again, if you want the console kind of vibe, this is it. And so I like it. I really do like it. Um, I hope this stuff in this series was helpful to you. If you have any questions at all, you can leave them in the comments below and I'd be glad to try to answer them. And as I get more familiar with this thing, um, I could probably you know, be, give you more information that might be helpful to you. Um, and let me know what you think below. If you have this already, what do you like or dislike about it? If anything, let us know in the comments below. If you're looking at a control surface and you're looking at this and some other ones, what other ones are you looking at? I'd be curious to know. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, that's really it. So thank you so much for watching this video. As I said at the beginning, I want you to go check out homerecordingmadeeasy.com. Go get your free mixing course. It's my gift to you. It's hundred bucks. Get it. It's free. You can't miss it. There's a big orange button right on the homepage. Just click on it, download your course, get into it. You'll dig it. If you really like that course and you dig my style of teaching and you want to uh, some, take one of my other paid training courses, I want to give you a coupon code that you can use. So you can get one at a heavy discount. I want to give you a 25% discount on any one of the training courses on the website. The coupon code is YouTube 25. You'll see it come up on the screen and it'll be in the description box below. And again, last but not least, if you're really into mixing and you really want to learn the craft of mixing in a non-technical way, and you want to get some one-on-one -on -one time with good old uncle Dave here every month, and you want a new mixing course every month with new multi-track files, and you want to meet a, an awesome, just an awesome group of people that are all part of the community um, that are all trying to get better at the craft of mixing. We've been now, uh, in, in, uh, open, uh, there about five years now we're going on our, going on our fifth year at mixingmadeeasy.net, And it's a wonderful group of people. And a lot of the students that are there have been with me since the beginning and they're still learning stuff and they're still helping others. And it's a great community. So if you're into mixing, check out mixingmadeeasy.net. All the links will be in the description box below. Once again, thank you so much for joining me for this entire series of the Icon QCon Pro X. And again, I wanna say thank you to Icon as well for sending this to me and for allowing me to experience and bring these videos to you. They didn't have to do this um, and it was really cool of them to do so. And I look forward to maybe, they seem like really good people, the few people that I've uh, kind of worked with over there. And I look forward to maybe working with them in the future. So thanks so much Icon as well. Until the next video, I've been Dave with homerecordingmadeeasy.com and mixingmadeeasy.net. I'll see you guys really soon. Take care, everybody.